Hi, my name is Romy Ries. I'm working at the Chair of Brewing and Beverage Technology at the Technical University of Munich. In this short video tutorial, I'd like to show you how you can load all the required information models of the other companion specifications we used and how you can instantiate and configure your own custom information model for your machine. First of all, open your preferred OPC UA modeling tool. We are using Xiaomi, but you can use, of course, instead every other OPC UA modeling tool. Load all the required companion specifications to your modeling tool. You can do this in Xiaomi either by drag and drop all the uh, node set files into Xiaomi. In this case, you have to um, pay attention to the order as they are depending on each other. In Xiaomi, you can also set a default information model folder here for default node set files. Um, you can select the folder, highlight or, or select all the um, needed information models and then when you start it the next time, so doing these changes, starting a new project, you have your required information models already there. And you can see it here under objects, uh, sorry, under types, the object types, space object types. You, uh, you have already the object types for the companion specifications. Wein Stefan, so it's here, the space object types, these machine types. What you now need is to load our WS Suites companion spec or type system. So it's Wein Stefan, the Suites node set file. And you can see here underneath the machine types, the machine type, you see all the other types which are defined in our Wein Stefan standards Suites type system, for example, here for a robing line or a molding plant or mobile plant. Now we can start to instantiate an object type and building a customer specific information model. First of all, we need to add a new namespace. Um, Typically, the namespace is some, somehow called like the company, so I just um, call it um, my suites company, and um, it's just a proposal, but um, maybe it's useful to um, have a subdivision into separate lines or separate countries or sites. So after the company name, they could follow a country code, for example, which is the E for Germany, and then maybe a site code or site name. Mm, let's say Freising, because we are living in Freising. And another part for the line. Let's say we have line A here. My sweets company, it's in Germany, it's located in Freising, and it's line A. Okay, it is already unlocked so we can start instantiating a machine here. If the namespace is not unlocked you can easily unlock it. Right click unlock namespace or maybe also here. Now it's unlocked and we can work, we can work here and instantiate machines in this namespace. So, as we have defined in the companion spec for Weinstefan standards, that all the machines are part of the machine folder, or has to be part of the machine folder, we're going to the objects, to machines, and at, at this uh, place here, we're starting to instantiate a machine. So, add instance, and let's call it my 
molding plant because it's a molding molding line and um, now we have to um, we have to uh, change the type definition to the correct types so you can either browse through the, the tree view here as I showed you before it's derived from the base object types then we got the VS WS machine type which is here and underneath the VS machine type we got the molding plant type so this would be the first way the other one is just to if you get this view just to type in what you're looking for so mold want to describe a molding plant um, you see this is the right one we have sweets molding plant type this would be the wrong it's a mold form type mold infeeder type so you can see um, which types are existing with um, something with mold inside the name so we just select the right one which is the WS Suites molding plant type and selecting the right namespace so make sure you really select the right namespace in this case that's the only one which is available because this is the only unlock namespace but sometimes you have um, you have other namespaces here um, unlocked accidentally so make sure you select the right one okay now immediately you get a new machine underneath the machine folder you can always check what's the type of in certain objects if you go to the attributes and references tab and then scroll down to the non-hierarchical references and there you find the type definition of a certain object in this case of course it is a WS Suites molding plant type which is fine underneath the molding plant you find straight at the beginning different components and variables all these components and variables are here because these are mandatory objects or mandatory variables so let's start for example with some variables you see here the, the folder um, which which provides different um, counter values underneath this folders are already two variables for the consumption of electricity and the total product let's go to the other side so in this folder you find type defined references and you have the has component reference type here which means underneath the counters folder there are the consumption of electricity and the total products values and as there are mandatory data points you can see it here in the modeling rule these are both mandatory data points so you can't unclick them and they are already here if you have for example also a, a counter value for the good product you can easily um, select also these variables and um, it's an optional one and you have it here underneath the counter folders in your machine then you have already there other um, called components or other objects for example here a demolding station underneath the my molding plant you have all the um, all the objects which are optional or mandatory grouped underneath this um, defined references so you see here the demolding station the demolding station and it is a demolding station type and it's mandatory and because it is mandatory you have it straight from the beginning on the left hand side as a component in your molding plant other um, objects are optional for example here an ambient air heating station from heating up the molds it is an optional 
component and if you have an ambient air molding station, mold heating station, you just can click and select also this component here and you will find it on the left hand side. Then you have also another component which is just named zero for the beginning. This is um, this is the beginning for mandatory placeholder. So at the first view you have can have a look what's actually what is the for type. So it is type definition uh, WS Suites depositor type. So it is a depositor of a molding plant. And when you go now one high one level higher, you also see here this zero and you can freely name the depositor as um, as you like. For example, depositor um, shell. Depositor shell. And it's now named depositor shell. Uh, why it is, is why it is it a mandatory placeholder? I like to show you. Here it is a mandatory placeholder. That means underneath um, molding plant there can be more than one depositor but there has to be at least one. This is why when instantiating a molding plant type you always start at least with one depositor but you can freely name it. So at the beginning it's just named by zero but um, you can rename them. So if you now want to add another depositor because you have like three depositors in your in your molding plant you can just copy the existing one so that's the one possibility you copy the existing depositor and name it in a different way like depositor say filling or you can do this by instantiating this type. Then you get a zero again. Depositor, let's say bottom. So now you've got your three depositors. Then beside the, the mandatory placeholder you also have optional placeholders. So in this case an ambient air cooling station which is like a cooling tunnel is or can be part of a molding plant but don't necessarily have to be. So whenever you have a cooling station in your molding plant you can start and instantiate this type and also here because it is not uh, we have no naming pattern how to call this you can freely name it that's an advantage the disadvantage is that it always starts with a zero here so if you have straight from the beginning a lot of uh, zeros here you always have to check okay what's this kind of um, what's this kind of um, type here so in this case here, we know it is a cooling tunnel. Cooling tunnel and we call it cooling tunnel shell because it's the cooling tunnel for the, for the shell. Okay. Cooling tunnel shell. In this way, you can easily build up your molding plant, adding all components which which are um, in your plant or uh, configuring the existing ones. Of course underneath these um, components you got already the variables for example also here machine speed or state or warning and alarms and you got um, again some other components 
which are there because they are mandatory. So we can check here. It's, uh, what does it mean? The zero. We have, we have two zeros. So underneath the cooling tunnel, we have got this one zero, and it is an air tampering zone because you maybe have two or three zones in one cooling tunnel, and you can um, change the name here. That's the other way. Change the name here. Um, I always change it here. So we have well cooling tunnel. We got these objects here. Then we see already this is the other zero is an air dryer type. So I will just change these first. It's an air dryer, and this is a um, tempering. Or let's say it is a cooling zone one. And we not just have one zone, we have a second one. So I have just copied them and have a cooling zone two. Okay. So we have underneath the cooling tunnel for the shell, we have two cooling zones, we have an air dryer. And um, in this cooling zone, we have maybe other informations which are required. So we have temperatures, which are all, of course interesting. The temperature for the, the, the actual value and which is um, mandatory here. And the, the set point temperature, which is optional. You can click and select them if you have a set point here. Then the other objects underneath the cooling zone. So again, just called zero. But if you go and see what is the type definition of this type, you see it as a fan. So we call this a fan. If you have more than one in one zone, just copy them, rename them however you like. As we now have uh, configured this one cooling tunnel shell, maybe it makes sense to just go back or first configure all the levels under the cooling tunnel and then go back and just copy the cooling tunnel for the shell. Just copy them, rename it, rename it bottom and you don't have to configure all the other things again. So cooling tunnel shell and now cooling tunnel bottom and we have already the cooling zone one, cooling zone two.